This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is the first of a number of lectures on vorticity. We know that many weather systems are characterized by rotating winds. Indeed, this is almost intuitive. We have tornadoes, we have hurricanes, which are famous as cyclones. They're famous as vortices. Hence, we know that many weather systems are characterized by rotating winds. We also know that because of the Earth's rotation, the atmosphere is often observed to rotate around us. Hence, these rotating winds that we are so used to are really caused by something quite fundamental about our planet, namely its rotation. Here is an example of a hurricane where, once again, we'll see here is this rotation down low, which is counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere which is called cyclonic, and then after the air gets up here to the top and it diverges, then we have this idea of clockwise flow, anticyclonic. Hence we see with this hurricane both cyclonic and anticyclonic rotation. If you imagine a low pressure system here, an idealized flow where the flow is perfectly circular around that low pressure system, this type of system is often called a vortex. If you go back to the beginning of the course, I stated that many of the weather features that we would look at could either be characterized as a vortex or as a wave. The definition of vorticity is that vorticity is the measure of rotation of an air parcel about a vertical axis. Mathematically, vorticity is the curl of the velocity field curl u or del cross u will be more common. Here u is the velocity vector. Vorticity is a vector. This is a map that might be viewed as characteristic of many maps that you see of the atmosphere and especially in weather forecasting. And this is a forecast of a quantity called absolute vorticity at 500 hectopascals. And what I want to show here is, here is a low in geopotential, or a low pressure system. Here is the flow around that system. You can see the wind arrows here. And you can see this idea of a circulation of this rotational flow about this low. This is a wave, not a vortex. And hence, you don't really see this flow closing off like we did in that idealized situation. And this is the situation that we will see more often than not in middle latitudes. It is important to define the sign of vorticity. F is the Coriolis parameter, and it will represent the vorticity of the planet. That is, that effect that is coming from the rotation. It will be what we will call the planetary vorticity. F is positive in the northern hemisphere, F is negative in the southern hemisphere. Remember, it's 2 omega times the sine of the latitude. Positive vorticity is associated with cyclonic rotation in the northern hemisphere, and that will be the circulation around low pressure systems. Negative vorticity is associated with cyclonic rotation in the southern hemisphere, which is also associated with low pressure systems. Therefore, you can see that our definition of cyclonic, which stands in contrast to anticyclonic, our definition of cyclonic has the vorticity associated with the low pressure system aligning with the vorticity of the planet. Hence, cyclonic systems are places where you see the planetary vorticity and the vorticity associated with a particular low pressure system accumulating to make for a lot of rotation, high winds, high curvature. Anticyclonic systems are the opposite of that. Anticyclonic systems rotate counter to the Earth's vorticity. Hence, you can see that they might be limited in what we might call how high a high can get, how intense something can get, because it's working against a very powerful acceleration that comes from the Earth. Vorticity is very closely related to angular momentum in both of its concepts and its behavior. 
and a frequent comparison that is used is a skater and the idea of a skater when the skater holds out in this case her arms then she rotates relatively slowly when she brings in her arms then she rotates more rapidly same as indicated up here but emphasizing here the rotational axis this phenomenon of the skater rotating more rapidly as the skater brings in her arms and aligns her legs in her center of mass along this axis of rotation is a consequence of the conservation of angular momentum. We will see this same type of phenomenon in the atmosphere where if you have, for example, a hurricane that grows in its diameter, then its winds will decrease. Likewise, if the hurricane becomes very compact, its winds are likely to increase. An important concept to note is that the motion here is in the xy plane, but the rotation is around the vertical axis. So going back to that original definition of the vorticity, the motion will be in one plane and the rotation will be in an axis orthogonal to that plane. This is true for all directions, x, y, and z, that you can have rotation in any of those planes and the axis of rotation will be perpendicular to that plane. If we want to think about the formalization of rotation and divergence, we can imagine that we have some flow here and we're going to look at this point. We could have flow that flows into or away from that point. This is drawn here where you can see there is just flow that is aligned with the x and y axis that's flowing into on this side and away on this side into and away in this direction here. Or you could have flow, a component that flows around it. I hope that that is somewhat intuitive that you can completely describe the flow as the flow that is into and away from the point or the flow that's around the point. You can perhaps mathematically imagine that in the same way that we talked about the problem where we could have an average and a deviation from the average where you could define the rotation around the point and then you could take the total flow, subtract that rotational part, and say, here is the irrotational flow. And there, by definition, you have defined the entire flow. A concept that is important that you be aware of that we actually do not use very much in the way I teach this course is a concept called the circulation. Circulation is based on this idea of the tangential velocity component summed all the way around this curve. This will give you some idea of what we call the circulation around a point. We're doing science and hence we want to quantify these ideas and therefore there is a mathematical relationship and if you go back to the beginning of the course you'll now see why we were paying so much attention to these ideas. We have the dot product or the divergence and the divergent part of the wind, del dot u, and this is what represents the flow into or away from the point. Here is a flow that's divergent, which is showing mass flowing away in all directions. Divergence is related to the stretching of the velocity field. Hence, the derivatives are in the same direction as the flow. Therefore, it's du dx here and dv dy here. The complement to the divergence is the curl, and the curl represented here using this symbol here to represent the cross product is a vector and del cross u is the rotational part of the wind which is the definition of the vorticity. If we look at one component of this, this is the component in the z direction, the k unit vector. This is related to the shear of the velocity field. 
and these will be derivatives that are orthogonal to the direction of the motion. There is a mathematical foundation to this. It's called the Helmholtz decomposition, and you can find actually a very nice proof of it in the Wikipedia article on the Helmholtz decomposition. But essentially it says that any field can be represented as rotational and irrotational pieces. And this is true under a set of pretty general assumptions about the field being continuous and the ability, of course, to take derivatives. And with that, that is an introduction to the vorticity.